Welcome to Weasel Jaw Gaming. Today we're going to be looking at the Sun and Moon Unbroken Bonds Battlemind theme deck featuring, of course, Mewtwo. Um, everything about this theme deck would make you think it's going to be a psychic theme deck. However, that's just not the case. The box features Mewtwo. Um, it's got the little psychic energy symbol on it to tell you it's psychic. Um, it's purple in color. Everything seems like it's psychic, but it just isn't. <laughs> As a Sun and Moon deck, it's going to have uh, 20 energy. In this case, we're dealing with um, 15 fire energy and only 5 psychic. So you can tell this deck is going to lean heavily towards the fire side. 15 fire, 5 psychic. As always, we like to take a look at the, the starters to begin with. So what do we want to be pulling and placing down early on in the first round or two there if we have the option? And for that, we're looking at um, Meowth and Litten. Meowth has Caterday. One energy, draw two cards. If you do this, the Pokemon is now asleep. Now, you are going to have two chances to wake back up. So for a two-card draw, that's a pretty good chance that you're going to be okay there. Um, Litten also has Caterday, but only draws a single card with its Caterday. If you have a choice between the two, you want to go with Meowth. Um, Neither one of them are really worth moving up to the secondary attack. Uh, Meowth has a two energy tail whip, which, I mean, if the, your opponent isn't throwing anything, that's not too bad. Litten, however, with a three energy big bite, that's a lot of damage, but in a 60 hit point package, which is at severe damage, severe danger of being knocked out. So you have two Meowths, three Littens, Litten does evolve into one of the heavier hitters, but not that you need to be saving it. Um, usually I'm, I'm a little worried about using those guys early, but Litten you certainly can because you have three Littens and you're really not going to be using the Incineroar for a lot of your damage more than likely. So if you lost a Litten, it's not a huge deal. Next up is our defense. And the only thing we really have here is kind of a pseudo defense. And I almost... Thought about not even mentioning it. Salandit, 70 health. Um, his grass fire attack does 10 damage and you discard a grass energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. The chances of you using Salandit as an actual damage dealer is very little. Um, grass fire only does 10 damage and the effect only affects people that have grass energy on them. So... The chances of this ever really coming to play as a defensive card is slim to none. So that means everything else we have is mm, power cards, supposedly. Um, we're going to start off with the Incineroar buildup because without him, the rest of the deck is almost worthless. So we've already talked about Lit. 60 health, has a really powerful attack. But it takes a lot of energy. It's not something you really want to be building up because Litten can get knocked out so easy by so many things. Litten evolves into Tora Cat, which is 80 health, so a little bit more health. Fire Fang ability is a little better to use. Uh, one energy does 20 damage and burns. So, you know, potential 60 damage total by the time it gets back to you and you'd be hitting him again. So that's actually not bad. Um, if you had Litten and Toracat, evolving up to Toracat right away just to get some Fire Fangs off isn't too bad. The big winner, though, is, of course, Incineroar. 160 health is very nice. It's your highest hit point in the deck. The uh, strong cheer ability is what Incineroar really has going for him and what this entire deck revolves around. Strong cheer. Your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. You cannot apply more than one strong cheer ability at a time. So 
the strong cheer ability makes everyone on your team do more damage. And that's big. That's really big. And it's the only thing that really makes this deck worth anything at all. If you can't get Incineroar down on your bench, you are going to have a very tough uphill battle, and you're likely not going to win. His attack is a 2 energy, which is pretty efficient, flamethrower that does 90 damage. But you have to discard an energy from this Pokemon. Discarding a single energy for 90 damage isn't a great deal, especially on a stage 2 Pokemon. But once you team it up with the strong cheer ability, you now have a 2 energy 120 damage attack where you have to discard one energy. Since it only needs two energy, that alone is decent. It's not great for a heavy hitter, but it's not bad. Um, so Incineroar may end up doing a lot of work for you, but it's best to keep him on the bench if at all possible. If you need to use him, you need to use him, but you really want him on the bench until you get a second one down. Moving on, we have Salandit and Salazzle. Salandit, of course, not very powerful. Uh, Salazzle has 100 health, has a 2 energy attack that's combustion for 60 damage. Now, again, this isn't someone that you'd normally call a big damage dealer, but if you have Incineroar on the field, now he's doing 90 damage, and that's not too bad. His Ability Roast Reveal may actually be more useful to you, though, because it's a draw. Once during your turn, you can discard a fire energy from your hand. If you do, draw three cards. So in those kind of situations where you have some extra energy, but you really need to be pulling other cards to get your evolutions, to get Incineroar on the bench, those kind of things, Salazzle can come in very handy. Next up is Dharamaka and Darmanitan. Now, Dharamaka, again, not very impressive. Not a whole lot going on there. Um, Flame Charge lets you find other energy and put it on Dharamaka. Um, the two energy flop for 20 damage is pretty weak. He's only got an 80 hit points, so it's not someone you really want to leave out there and do Flame Charges for. Darmanitan has 130 health, which is much more considerable. Find Wildfire, search your deck for up to three energy cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand. That's not bad. You do eat up a lot of energy in this deck, um, and his Flare Blitz is a good example of that. Two energy attack for 110 damage, or 140 if you have Incineroar. But you have to discard all energy from this Pokemon. So that means you get two energy on him, you attack, he loses the two energy, and it now takes you two more rounds to get back up to where you can do this. So really, it's kind of like a every other round kind of attack. And it's going to eat up a lot of energy. For that 110 to 140 damage, he's not a great attacker, but he works if you need him. We'll talk about the featured Pokemon next, and that's Mewtwo. Um, kind of a weak player here. 120 health. The attack, Psy Shock, is 3 energy, does 70 damage, 100 if you have Incineroar. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. That's nice. It's a good way to get past shields or damage resistance, things like that. But then again, you're only doing 70 to 100 damage. Um, so there's not a lot of cases where that's really going to make the difference for you. Um, certainly not going to be a one-shot knockout for most of those kind of defensive Pokemon. But it's there. Not something I'm going to be using a lot. And in fact, this isn't someone I would even put down on the bench, except for the tactical ability that he has. Mewtwo's ability is Mind Report. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may put a supporter card from your discard pile on top of your deck. And that's where this card really starts to shine. You want to hold Mewtwo in your hand. 
Then once you need a supporter card that you've already discarded, you've already used, you can use Mewtwo, you put them on the bench, you then can pull that card from the discard, put it on top of your pile. Then you can use any number of your different draws to then draw that card into your hand. Um, and that's where things like Salazzle can come in handy. You do a nice little combo there where you know, let's say you need to recover energy from your discard pile with Fisherman, which we'll talk about later. You play Mewtwo onto your bench. He mind reports Fisherman from the discard pile to the top of your draw pile. You then use Salazzle's Roast Reveal by discarding one energy. And then you draw three cards, including Fisherman. You then play Fisherman and recover four energy from discard. So all together in that little combination, you've added three energy to your hand. So that's where you want to be using that mind report. And that's really kind of the power here in the deck is more draws and card manipulation um, than it is with doing huge points of damage. Last up for our damage dealers is Turtonator. 110 health, dragon type. Um, 110 health is kind of low. Explosive Jet is a three energy attack. And what you do is you discard any amount of fire energy from your Pokemon. This attack does 50 damage for each card you discard this way. So, Explosive Jet, you start discarding that energy to start doing the damage. Um, and it does say from your Pokemon, not this Pokemon or active Pokemon. So that allows you to discard energy from other Pokemon. So it's not necessarily, you know, just Turtonator that's doing this. So that allows Turtonator to do some large damage. And if you couple that together with some things like Welder um, and Fisherman to recover energy and things like that, then you can actually recover the energy, play that energy on Pokemon, discard that energy for big hits of damage. Turtonator can discard his own energy if you need to to get that damage up there. And it's 50 damage per energy, so you're looking at 50, 100, 150, 200 probably as high as you're going to go. Uh, with Incineroar, make sure that you remember that adds 30 damage. So then you're looking at 80, 130, 180, possibly 230, but you're probably not going to go that high. So you're going to be able to knock out most things with just, if you have Incineroar on the bench, most things will get knocked out with just two energy discarded, whereas some things might take three. Um, but it's going to be a big drain on your energy. So that's all of our big hitters. Um, for types, you know, we're looking at a lot of fire, but we do have some psychic and dragon in there. Um, one colorless card, not too impressive there. Uh, so you do have a little bit of a variety there. And there are some interesting combinations to play. So let's start looking at those supporters. As with all sun and moon decks, a lot of your support is going to be coming from um, draws. So this deck has four hows. Uh, four hows is a lot of drawing. You also have two lookers, which draw cards from the bottom of your pile. In addition to those straight draws, we have Lily and Cynthia. Now Lily allows you to draw cards until you have six in your hand, or if it's the first turn, until you have eight in your hand. Um, good to play when you're running low on cards. Cynthia allows you to shuffle your hand in your deck, then draw six cards. So a good way to cycle maybe some bad cards right now that you don't want, um, or just to you know draw back up if you have a really low hand. So both great cards to really cycle your deck, draw cards. We also have Welder, which we mentioned earlier. Now, Welder... Um, allows you to attach up to two energy cards from your hand to one of your Pokemon. 
If you do, you can draw three cards. So again, this is a draw card. You uh, place up to two energy onto a Pokemon and then draw cards. So this is a good way to replace all that energy you have to discard and getting some draws. Also, don't forget for draws, you do have Meowth and Litten. If you needed a mid-game stall that also allowed you to draw some cards, playing them and using Catterday is not a horrible idea. And you also have Salazzle. It's always a good idea to have a Salazzle on your bench. If you are running a little energy heavy and short on other cards, it's a great card to use that ability where you discard the energy and then draw three cards. Speaking of energy, we uh, talked about Welder earlier. Uh, this is a good way to place two energy onto one Pokemon. Uh, really helps you build up Pokemon, get them ready for battle. Um, helps, them, helps you recover from all the energy you're discarding also. We also have Fishermen. There's two Fishermen in the deck. They allow you to put four basic energy from your discard pile into your hand. So that allows you to recover a lot of that energy that you are discarding. And keep in mind with Mewtwo's ability, you have a chance to pull any of these supporters back from the discard pile. So you can get some more draws with How or Looker. Um, more draws with Lily if your hand's running small. Um, more, more cycles with Cynthia. Uh, more energy placement with draws, with Welder, which would be actually a better deal probably usually than How or Looker. Um, so a lot of different options there. Uh, Fisherman's a good option too if you need to recover more energy. So those Mewtwo plays, um, you know, make sure you hold those Mewtwo's in reserve. Make sure you play them at the right time to recover the right card. The only other thing we have in our deck is a little bit of control. Um, with our own deck, we have two switches to help swap Pokemon around. Now when it comes to that energy, I forgot to mention that you do have a lot of ways to burn energy. So whereas you do have uh, you know, your Welder and your Fisherman to try to recover energy and place it, keep in mind that almost everything you have is throwing energy away. Incineroar discards an energy per round. Darmanitan is going to discard two energy per round. Salazzle is going to discard one energy per round, even possibly on the bench because it's an ability. Um, Turtonator could be causing you to discard one, two, three, maybe even four energy. So definitely uh, watch that energy. Um, don't get too happy with those discards. You will end up hurting yourself. There are no cards for heals or for pulling other Pokemon from the deck. So you are limited just to what you're drawing and the health that your Pokemon have. So make sure you watch that health, maybe pull people out using those switches or even tactical retreats if you need to. Now it's time to look at our stats. And this deck really doesn't have a lot of strengths going for it. Um, for power, we're looking at a three. No one really hits that hard. Um, Incineroar can do 120. Um, Slazzle can get to the 100 range. Um, or 90 range, sorry. 90 on that one. Uh, Mewtwo can get to 100. Darmanitan can get to the 140. Um, but in a lot of these cases, when you're looking at Incineroar or uh, Darmanitan, you're discarding a lot of energy. Your biggest hitter is Turtonator, but that means an even bigger drain on your energy. And you're going to end up running into a situation where if you're not getting that energy back out of the discard with Fisherman, you're going to be hurting. So that's where Mew 2 is really going to come in handy, either getting welders, fishermen's, or some kind of draws so that you can keep that energy rolling. Because of that limitation and because of the, you have so few damage dealers, that's why our power is still only at a three. 
Speed is talking about how fast we can get those heavy hitters up and running. And in this deck, it's, it's not very good. Um, problem is, really for any dependable damage, any big numbers that can actually start knocking things out in one or two attacks, you really need Incineroar on your bench. Um, he's a stage two Pokemon. So, and you don't have any way to pull specific Pokemon from your deck. So you're existing entirely on draws. Can you draw those right cards? Um, if you don't have Incineroar, everything in your deck is gimped a little bit in damage. And you're going to be hurting to do any big numbers, except for Turtonator, who still has that chance to do damage. But Turtonator needs three energy on him and needs a big source of other energy that he can discard from. So it's really hard to get doing damage early out of the gate with this deck. Agility is the ability to get the Pokemon you need on the bench when you need them. And that's pretty low, that's sitting at a two also. That's simply because we don't have any specific way to pull Pokemon. Um, we have to depend on just regular draws to try to get the stuff that we need. And that makes it a little less dependable. Energy efficiency is kind of an oddball here. Um, on the one hand, you have some great cards for getting energy, for using energy, for recovering energy, um, which would make efficiency really high. But then at the same time, if you're going to be doing any damage with your damage dealers, Tartanator, Incineroar, Darmanitan, you're going to be throwing a lot of energy away, which would make the rating really low, which is why we kind of even out at an efficiency of three. It's not great, it's not bad. Energy could make or break this deck. So that's why efficiency sitting at a three. Complexity, this is a relatively complex deck. The tactics aren't really over the top, but you have to make sure that you're really watching your energy reserves. You have to make sure that you're keeping a spot open on the bench for Mewtwo and keeping Mewtwo in your hand and making sure you use him for the right card at the right time. If you blow through two early Mewtwo's to pull a couple Howes back out, then later on when you've spent all your energy, you're gonna be stuck with nothing you can do because you can't get that energy back. So really be careful with that Mewtwo usage. Uh, be careful with what Pokemon you're using to attack um, so you don't you know, risk Incineroar when you could lose him because that damage bonus is important. So there's not, they're not super complex tactics, but it's complex enough that if you screw something up, it's really going to hurt you. So complexity sitting at a three. Resilience is only a two. You have no defense in this deck. Um, Turtonator, who's your biggest damage dealer, only has 110 health. Um, Salazzle sitting at 100 health, Mewtwo 120. Incineroar's your big um, health pool at 160. However, again, you're going to be hesitant to put him out there because if you do lose him, then you lose that damage bonus. So Resilience sits at a 2. Type ability is actually one of the powerful areas of this deck. Um, you have lots of variety again. You have a lot of fire cards. You have your two Psychic Mewtwo's, and you have your two Turtonator, which are Dragon types. You do have Meowth, um, although he's not a big damage dealer. However, I mean, in a pinch, um, with Incineroar's bonus, Tail Whip does do 60 damage, so it's not off the board if you have Incineroar out there. So with that, you have some weaknesses, of course, to Water, to Psychic, to fairy, to fighting, but you're also strong against, you know, psychic and, and grass. Um, so you have some flexibility depending on what you're facing to either have a type advantage or to be able to avoid um, losing out in a type advantage. So that's why your type ability is sitting pretty high at a four because there is a lot of variety here. As for deck manipulation, this is sitting at a one, and that's pretty generous because again, that's all based on Salandit's ability to discard grass energy. Um, might be powerful if you're facing a very specific grass deck. However, it's not something you want to depend on. Um, so 
you know, really here is, is your drawing ability that you're depending on, um, the ability to recover energy that you're burning. Um, all in all, not the most impressive and due to the weird complexity issues, it's a, it's a deck that really requires playing the right cards at the right time. That makes it really hard if you get on the downside ever trying to recover from that. If you lose some kind of critical Pokemon or you run out of a critical card, you're just going to be left high and dry. Um, and, and that's kind of the sad part about this deck. If this deck wasn't fire-based, it would probably be a decent contender for some other area. Um, if it was electric or more psychic or had some more dragon cards or something that really made it stand out for those other areas, it would probably be a little more popular. But as is, there's a lot better fire decks out there. And because of that, this deck just doesn't shine very much. Um, it's certainly playable. You can win. Um, it is a strong deck. It's got a lot of variations you can do with it. Um, but it's one of those decks that either works really well or just falls apart. So you know, hopefully you feel that you're a little more comfortable with the deck now. And, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, we'll be bringing you more of these kind of videos in the future. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see you next time.